What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 8 video. Now, I haven't made videos for the past few days because I was actually in the hospital for some minor stuff, it was just like a cute pancreatitis, but I was in there for the past few days, uh, so unfortunately I didn't have time to make videos or anything, I didn't have my stuff with me. So, I'm back, but you know, I didn't have time to make like a new team and bring it to the ladder and stuff. So I figured I would make today a little bit of a filler day, but at least something interesting that I want to cover. Uh, I want to talk about why Corviknight hasn't been seen for a couple of months in VGC and why it fell off. Now, if you aren't familiar with the earlier seasons of VGC, Corviknight was a major player from series one to seven. You should expect to see Corviknight in pretty much every tournament. You would see a team with a Corviknight on it. You would see a at least like a Corviknight on the ladder every few games, uh, and that's for good reason. We'll get into that in a second, but before we get into the video, do me a favor guys, if you enjoy this at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you mostly daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content, and answer my comment question of the day. If you were to use Corviknight in Series 8 right now, what would you do to make it outclass the things that have made it irrelevant in the current format? What? How would you run it? How would you give it a niche? Let me know in the comment section down below, and let's go ahead and get into it. So. I want to give an overview of Corviknight first. Corviknight was a really, really good Pokemon in the earlier formats. From Series 1 up until Series 7, you would see it in most games, and that's because of its phenomenal defensive bulk. It had 98 base HP, which when you combo that with 105 defense and 85 special defense, it was really difficult to take out. Along with that, it got Roost naturally, so you were able to actually recover health pretty easily. Now, while its offensive stats were usable, they weren't amazing. It had 87 attack and 53 special attack. You would never use a special attack on this Pokemon. Uh, you would mostly use physical, but it was its bread and butter was really mostly like body press, and occasionally people would run a weakness policy on it, but it was widely regarded that um, weakness policy was one of the worst ways to run Corviknight. It had a few things up its sleeve that were really good, and it was actually a really phenomenal Dynamax user. For one, it had an exclusive ability Mirror Armor, which makes it so you can't lower this thing's stats, and if you try, you'll actually get your stats lowered. So Icy Wind won't lower its speed, you're going to get your speed lowered. Intimidate wouldn't actually intimidate this Pokemon, it would just reflect it back on the user, which was actually huge when Incineroar dropped in Series 3. Corviknight usage did not drop at all, in fact, I think it went up slightly. Now, I do have Picolytics tabs open, and unfortunately, I can't find anything earlier than Series 5, and we couldn't actually look at Series 7 in particular. So I have Series 5 and 6 and 8 uh, on, the, on the tabs here, so I can actually reference those later on in the video. But Corviknight was really cool. Uh, mainly what you would want to do is run more of a special defensive set to make it so it could take Thunderbolts from things like... Uh, what was the popular electric type at the time? Rotom Wash. It was like Rotom Wash and Rotom Mo were really good electric types early in the format, uh, but Rotom Mo was mostly considered like a grass type. So it would actually be able to take Thunderbolts from those Pokemon pretty easily uh, if you ran a special defensive set. Uh, what you would usually do is run Protect, Iron Head, Body Press, Brave Bird with leftovers. You could honestly swap out Brave Bird or Body Press for Roost. Uh, you would never lose Iron Head though, and that's because it was a somewhat okay Dynamax user. It was never really your first choice, but it was able to just, you know, get those max steel spikes off, deal a decent amount of damage, and boost its defenses to the point where the body press would actually be doing phenomenal damage coming off of that boosted 105 defense stat. Sometimes you would run a little bit more bulk in physical defense, sometimes people would just max that out and not really care about special defense. Uh, but for the most part, since you weren't boosting the special defense, uh, you would have to compensate for that in some way or another. Uh, it was really cool because you could actually face off against uh, a lot of Pokemon that would use things like Max Wormwind or uh, Max, what was it? It was Durant in particular had a pretty good matchup against it because it, it would go for like things like Max Wormwind, or not Max Wormwind, it would go for uh, Max Flutterby and you would actually be able to lower the special attack of the partner Pokemon next to it and wall it out pretty well. So Corviknight had a lot of really cool things it could do. It could eat hits from Dragapult, it could eat a hit or two from Rotom Mo and Rotom Wash. Even Rotom Heat, it could eat like an overheat once if you really, really went into special defense and if the Rotom Heat wasn't maxed out. There was a lot of cool things it could do. On top of that, it was a really nice wall to Togekiss in particular. Togekiss was one of the main reasons Corviknight was really huge because you would just absolutely wall it out and it did not like facing Corviknight whatsoever with Max Steel Spike, with uh, <laughs> the fact that it just sits there on the field you can't actually beat it with the togekiss um corviknight also didn't really mind getting its max steel spikes redirected into the, or not redirected into the togekiss but like uh switched in on by anything because even if a rotom mo came in let's say you had like one max airstream off so you would outspeed it uh the next turn 
you would be able to, like, you know, once the Dynamax ended, be able to get off a body press for some really decent damage on the Rotom Mo. It was actually really hard to wall out Corviknight for the most part uh, because it focused mainly on its defensive stats to attack. Now, it really only had the two sets. It had Leftover's Mirror Armor, uh, and it had... Well, that's still supposed to be Mirror Armor. Uh, but it also had a bulk up set where you would bulk up and try to attack uh, with... Uh, body press and iron head and sometimes you would actually swap out body press for max airstream But I feel like body press was the better option for the most part bulk up was pretty much just a way to say like yeah I'm pretty much <laughs> just gonna set up on you and try to KO uh, and it was you know decent for the most part However, um, if we actually take a look at series 5 uh, Corviknight was still pretty widely used. This was actually after the first DLC. Uh, if we look up Corviknight usage, this is at a time where Incineroar was number one in usage. Corviknight was still at 8%, which is pretty high up there. If it's on 8% of teams, you're going to see it in most matchups. It was really good for facing sand and stuff. It was really good for walling out Rillaboom. It was actually a really, really solid Pokemon. In Series 6, when a lot of the top Pokemon got banned, when Cinderace got banned, when Dragapult got banned, it actually still maintained relevance because it was good at facing off against Porygon Z. It could wall it out for the most part. Because uh, Porygon Z would usually just run like Max Strike, uh, Max Darkness, and the fact that you weren't actually gaining your Special Defense Lord meant that Corviknight could sit on the field for a really long time uh, and wall that thing's Dynamax out. Now, Series 7 is when it seriously fell off, and unfortunately I don't have the usage stats for that uh, available to me. Uh, but Series 8, we can actually see how used Corviknight is in the current format. Corviknight is at 0.12% usage. That is on less than 1% of teams. It is almost at one it is almost at one tenth of one percent which is really really low the fact that this thing's most used teammates are zamazenta comfey and gudra and azumarill at that mean that this pokemon is used on like 12 teams they're like well monthly usage 22,000. but the fact that it's so low makes it like it makes it pretty apparent that it's only on very very niche teams and honestly on maybe some teams that newer players are building and why is that I think we can point to one culprit that has been on the screen since the beginning of the video that you probably knew I was going to point out, Celesteela. Now if we compare Corviknight and Celesteela, Celesteela in a lot of ways is just a direct upgrade to Corviknight, uh, but it, Corviknight does have a couple of things over it that I want to talk about. It just isn't relevant enough for it you know, to not be used, it, it isn't relevant enough for it to be used over Celesteela for the most part. So Corviknight with base 98 HP just barely nudges out Celesteela's base 97 HP. And with its base 67 speed, it's just a little bit faster than Celesteela 61. However, in every other stat, it gets outclassed. 87 attack, 101 attack. 105 defense, okay, 103 defense, but still. <laughs> uh, 53 special attack, 107 special attack. 85 special defense, 101 special defense. Like, Celesteela is just like a better Corviknight. It loses in three different stats, but it loses by like one or two points, which is honestly like not even... It isn't even like enough to even be like commented on, to be honest. Now, Celesteela is a much more flexible Pokemon, and while it is prone to being intimidated, it's mostly going to be a special attacker, and the ability to use Beast Boost to make its special attack even higher with every KO is really huge. On top of that, you don't even need to make it like a special offensive Pokemon. You could just make it wall things out. Leech Seed Protect Air Slash Flash Cannon means that this thing, when you combo it with Leftovers, is for the most part going to have longer... A longer lifespan on the field than Corviknight would. Corviknight has to actually click uh, Roost and not protect in the turn it wants to regain HP, where Celesteela can literally just get a Leech Seed off on something with a decently high HP stat, and at the end of the turn it gets attacked, it's going to get a huge chunk of health from Leech Seed plus leftovers, and then the next turn it can just go for a Protect. And if you run this thing specially defensive, it's going to be able to eat hits from pretty much everything. Uh, a Thunder from Kyogre won't one-shot this thing. Yes, Regieleki is a huge threat to this thing, but it's an even bigger threat to Corviknight, so you'd prefer Celesteela. On top of that, uh, Celesteela while it doesn't have that Intimidate immunity, and while uh, Thunderous is still a huge threat to it, Celesteela can run offensive sets that somewhat deal with those Pokemon. Now, an Incineroar is still a threat to a Celesteela. However, it does struggle to knock it out because of how bulky it is, and Celesteela can actually threaten to one-shot it back if it's not running enough special defense by clicking Power Herb Meteor Beam, thus giving it plus one special attack and hitting it with a base 120 special Rock-type move, which is insane damage coming off of anything. If you used Meteor Beam Nihiligo or Meteor Beam Celesteela, Meteor Beam anything in the previous few formats, you know how much damage this thing can do. Once it goes for that Meteor Beam, it can then Dynamax and go for Max Airstream into whatever it wants, boosting its speed. It has enough speed without boosting, without a boosting nature that it can actually outspeed uh, the fastest relevant 
Pokemon in the format that isn't Regieleki. Whenever we say outspeed Pokemon, we usually just discount Regieleki. We say, yeah, nothing's outspeed in that. Uh, but it is able to outspeed the Calyrex Ghost form uh, at plus two. So you can actually click Meteor Beam on the Incineroar that's usually next to it, and then start clicking Max Airstream at plus one to get some easy KOs. And like I said, it's a really bulky Pokemon. And unlike Corviknight, when you Dynamax this thing, you are gonna get KOs. Corviknight, for the most part, when it Dynamax, was just trying to boost its defenses. Like Celestilo, when it Dynamaxes, it's boosting its defenses with Flash Cannon, but it can also run like, it can also just go for Max Airstream to get KOs. And it still has the rock coverage. It still has the ability to, you know, protect once in a while if it wants to just, you know, wait out a hit. But it's still such a good Pokemon as a Dynamax user. Now, while it does outclass it offensively just outright, like there's no way you can make an, a justification that Corviknight can outclass a offensive Celesteela in that department. You could, you know, say, all right, well, physically defensively, Corviknight's still kind of better. Uh, you can, you know, run Roost. It gets Tailwind too. Tailwind's pretty good. But I don't think Tailwind is as relevant on Corviknight when you have things like Whimsicott and uh, even Talonflame, I would argue, is a better Tailwind user. Even though Talonflame isn't relevant right now, I would argue you would, I would rather run Talonflame as my Tailwind user than Corviknight because it's more likely to get it off with plus one uh, priority. Uh, Celesteela has something that Corviknight does not. Corviknight does not get Wide Guard. Celesteela does, and that's really huge for a format where you might have to protect a partner from a Prespice Blades or an Eruption or a Water Spout from Kyogre. Those are huge things. Even Regieleki usually wants to go for Electroweb on most Pokemon, so if it isn't going for the Thunderbolt, if you're willing to make that read, Celesteela can wall out Regieleki's Electroweb, preventing your team from getting their speed lowered and then being able to KO things. Like, Celesteela is such a good Pokemon in this format. If we look at the usage stat, Corviknight, we said is at less than 1% usage. Celesteela is at 6.55% usage, which while it isn't the most used Pokemon, you can see it does have a niche in the format that people are taking advantage of. It also gets access to fire moves, so while Corviknight would have to boost its defenses to beat things like Kartana, uh, to beat things like Ferrothorn with Body Press, Celesteela can just click Flamethrower once and forget about it. Like, that's a huge thing in its favor. Uh, on top of that, I have actually faced physical Celesteela, which is a nightmare. However, I don't think it's the best set. Even as a physical attacker, I would argue Celesteela outclasses Corviknight just because it has higher uh, offensive stats. And while it does have to run more speed to outspeed things like uh, Spectre at plus two, it's going to be doing more damage and it's going to be living more hits. It's overall just a better Pokemon right now. And while I hate to say it, I've always been the guy that says like, yeah, every Pokemon has some sort of niche they can fill. It's very hard to find one for Corviknight right now, so I wanted to make this video to talk about that and explain why Corviknight really isn't used anymore, and also ask you guys, how would you use Corviknight in the current format? If you could find some sort of use for it, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll even sort of make it a challenge. Whoever actually whoever actually uh, finds the best set for Corviknight and can send me a team that works for it, I'll go ahead and I'll gift you a sub on my Twitch channel. You just get free sub. That's just going to be my reward. I know it's a small reward, but I want to know. But yeah, uh, with that out of the way, or with that out of the way, it's the whole freaking video. Uh, with that done, let me know what you guys think about the video in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.